Welcome back to the Situation Room. In what's become a political firestorm, the Obama administration today treated reporters to talking points about talking points. What we didn't get were clear answers about who watered down the official explanation of September's terrorist attack on the U.S. post in Benghazi, Libya. Thanks to newly public email traffic, we now know the explanation changed a dozen times. Mentions of possible al-Qaeda involvement were taken out of these talking points. So were references to CIA security warnings. Now, was that done intentionally to prevent political damage to President Obama? His spokesman says no. Did the White House change the intelligence community's assessment of what happened? Did the White House tell the intelligence community to say that there were demonstrations? And the uh, underreported fact uh, uh, of all the revelations today is that these documents bear out what we said all along. The answer is no. The answer is no. The answer is no, says Jay Carney. Let's bring in CNN foreign affairs reporter Elise Labbitt. Elise, how is the State Department responding to all, if, all of this? Because there is something of a disconnect between what the White House was doing at the time and what the State Department was doing at the time. That's right, Jake. Well, the State Department officials are familiar with this interagency process are saying what Newland was trying to do is raise two concerns about the CIA's early drafts of those talking points. First of all, they were say, Newland was saying that these talking points are far, go far further than even Newland was allowed to go at the briefing. And uh, she said, listen, we all agreed to this investigation. We all agreed to let it play out. Everybody has to be on the same page. So that's the first thing. And then she was, thought that the CIA was trying to do an end run using congressional members of its intel committees to kind of exonerate itself at the State Department's expense by suggesting that the State Department ignored these warnings about the security situation. Let's take a listen to a little exchange at the State Department briefing today. So well, again, excerpts good. of various emails are, have been taken. Uh, and you feel that you feel that if we were able to read the emails in their entirety, they would show some kind of context that we would understand? Well, of course, the emails were only one piece of the wider interagency mm -hmm. discussion of this. And so when you take them and snippets of them, it can be taken out of context. Well, taken out of context. So I went on to push uh, Patrick Vanzell, the deputy spokesman that the administration should release these emails. And Jake, I think the whole State Department and supporters of Newland hope that the White House will release them because officials say that they will show that there was no cover up, that she was just trying to get everybody on the same page. Except that she was arguing that what would happen if this paragraph that talked about all the warnings uh, towards the State Department about what was going on in Libya against Western interests throughout 2012, that she was worried that it would cause members of Congress to beat up the State Department. That was her concern, and that's a political concern just on its face, no? It's a political concern, and Jake, you know how these uh, interagency emails back and forth, every agency is trying to uh, protect itself, cover its butt, so to speak, and make sure its equities are protected. And Newland felt that the CIA was trying to throw the State Department trying to make sure that didn't happen. Those warnings in these early drafts of the talking points, I might add, that the CIA suggested that they had warned a growing threat, a growing Al Qaeda threat in Benghazi. CIA has never publicly acknowledged those warnings. Except also, at least we know now that there have been investigations that many of the State Department employees on the ground in Libya were also worried about increasingly violent situations in the country and asking for security to either come to Libya or be allowed to stay in Libya. So it wasn't the State Department in this case trying to protect the State Department employees. It's trying to, it was the State Department trying to protect the senior State Department leadership who refused to give those lower level people the security that they wanted, right? And that, that's right, and that's one of the things that Greg Hicks was saying in his testimony earlier this week, um, that they felt that this independent review board had kind of let some senior officials off the hook who made those ultimate, those security decisions. So it's a little bit of trying to cover your butt. It's a little bit of trying to keep everybody on the same page. And I think that at the same time, one of the major unanswered questions is protest 
come from? The State Department never said that, that there was a protest, always maintained it was a terrorist attack. The CIA had always said so as well. So who came up with this idea of the protest? Was it a loose piece of intelligence thread that they just went with? Nobody really knows the answer to that question, Jake. All right, Elise Labatt, thanks. Let's talk about the political repercussions for President Obama and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and bring in CNN Chief Political Analyst Gloria Borger. Gloria, walk us through this. What's the context for this controversy? Well, it's political. I mean, let's go back to last fall. You're in the heat of a political campaign in September. Uh, the attack on Benghazi occurs. Uh, it, and uh, Mitt Romney has made some mistakes and how he talks about uh, Benghazi. And I think if you're in the administration, you'd rather uh, let Romney's mistakes get played out rather than details about whether this was or was not a terror attack. You have these talking points that are being edited, Jake, to go to members of Congress who want to go on television uh, and talk about this, members of Congress from the Intelligence Committee, that is before they were even used by Ambassador Rice. So today, Jay Carney says, you know what? Republicans have chosen to politicize this, but I would argue that it's very legitimate to ask the question of whether this administration, in the middle of a campaign, having had this terror attack, was somehow concerned about being accused of dropping the ball Jake, or being blamed in one way or another for not seeing the warning signs about what occurred in Benghazi. So completely political uh, time, uh, time of the year, right? The middle of a campaign. Right. So Gloria, we only have about a minute left, but mm -hmm. tell us where you think this is all going now. Where does this head? Well, I think it's going to head to more uh, congressional investigations. There have been some calls for a select committee, which would be a bipartisan select committee, like, for example, Iran-Contra was. The Wall Street Journal today endorsed that idea. I mean, I believe that uh, Congress's job is oversight, Jake. They ought to be able to do their job. They ought to try and make this a bipartisan investigation to get to the bottom of it, largely not only for the political uh, answers here, but also they don't want this to occur again, and if for no other reason, uh, do their job. That's right. I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that one of the biggest gifts that the White House has been given in all of this is that so many of the players who are asking for questions are very partisan Republicans. That's right. Uh, and and if it's not the statesmen of the Republican Party, it's the the more attack dog types that allows the White House to dismiss what is a legitimate controversy as just politics. Right, but if there are questions about whether the State Department and the CIA had infighting in the middle of something that was awful that had been occurring on the ground, whether there are questions of whether there should have been more air support given at the time, I mean, these are issues that, uh, that the internal investigation looked at, but I think it's also, it also makes sense for Congress to take a look at it in a, in a larger context. All right, Gloria Borger, thank you so much. Sure. And on that point you just made, when the diplomats in Benghazi were attacked, the U.S. military did not come to the rescue. They say they were not able to. Coming up, we have an exclusive look at how the Perfect. Marines are making sure that they will be ready next time. And also coming up next, the IRS embarrasses the White House by admitting 